The Q presents On the Ground. Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to Silicon Angle of Cube's uh, exclusive coverage of On the Ground here at Ford Silicon Valley headquarters for R&D Advanced Car Technology, all the secret sauce. I'm John Furrier, the host of the Cube. Ken Washington is Vice President of Research and uh, all the car engineering here in Silicon Valley. Uh, first of all, congratulations on a success. CEO Mark Fields is out here. Huge contingent, a lot of big announcements. Um, but first, congratulations for all the work you've done in Silicon Valley. It's been fantastic to watch you guys from the beginning. Just amazing growth. Thank you very much. It's really great to be uh, literally part of the Silicon Valley ecosystem. That was our intent when we came out here uh, more than uh, three years ago, yeah. and we expanded that presence about a year and a half ago. And now we're uh, we're working uh, pretty pretty well here as a member of the Silicon Valley community. You know, we see companies come and go in Silicon Valley. It's like you know laps around the tracks of you know, cycles of innovation. But you guys did something different. You dug in here. Uh, you dug in here with leadership uh, and from the top down endorsement. Also, you had some real tech chops coming in and developing what was a nascent area now growing very rapidly. The autonomous car. The big announcements today was huge moonshot like announcement. Shipping in mass production autonomous vehicles, driverless cars by 2021, just for me personally, that's the year after that's my son's going to be a freshman in college and just four more years. It's going to be pretty amazing. That is a huge, bold move. Um, and you got the announcements on technology partnerships, on the sensors, and a machine learning acquisition, and expanding and really doubling, tripling your footprint here in Silicon Valley. So take us through that. What's, what's going on today? Share with the folks what we just heard. And also I live streamed it on my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash John Furrier, if you want to watch the, the whole keynote. Tell us what's happening. Okay, great. Well, th thanks for the acknowledgement. We're really excited about our announcement today and about the time that we're in in the history of the automotive industry. You know, we are at a pivotal time in the history of, of the automotive industry where, I mean, it's as big as automation for the vehicle is as big as, as the uh, introduction of the moving assembly line more than 100 years ago. If you think about it, 100 years ago, people couldn't afford cars. They were made for the luxury, for the rich. And that opened it up to everybody to have a car. The same thing is going to happen with autonomy. And so that's the first element of our announcement is we're going to make mobility and having transportation as a service available to the masses by putting an autonom a fully autonomous vehicle into a ride or a ride sharing or a ride service mm -hmm. in the year 2021. And the reason that we're excited about that is it's going to make people's lives better and it's going to open up new business opportunities for, for um, expanding our business as we continue to move from being an automaker to an automaker and a mobility company. So that was the first thing. And we're so excited about that. It's the right time to do it. And we've got the right... Uh, the right capabilities to pull it off. You guys literally have, no pun intended, pole position, if you will, on this this race to AI, machine learning, autonomous vehicles, certainly driverless cars. You're seeing Uber, you're seeing Lyft. A lot of people seeing the success and their relationship with the cars changing. We've certainly had that conversation. But the CEO of Ford and your CEO, Mark Fields, is up there really talking a different vibe here. He's talking about how the company is totally behind this. They see it as with societal benefits. So I want you to help bridge the gap for the folks watching who might say how does this benefit me Joe six pack in the middle of America is I'll see and, and it's gonna certainly help people move from point A to point B but the technology underneath it is complex I mean consumers are either using Windows or Macs and they've seen the blue screen of death they know what the spinning wheels like software isn't perfect what are you guys doing what are the engineers doing how do you resolve that kind of FUD or the that cognitive fear that someone might have well, I mean, you, you said it well, which is the fact that autonomous vehicles are new to most people. I mean, you talk about autonomous vehicles, it sounds very science fiction-y, right? Uh, we've been doing this for over 10 years. And the reason, we haven't been very uh, vocal about talking about our autonomous vehicle strategy and plans because we're not in a race to do it first. We are focused on doing what's right for our customers, which means we wanted to take the time to build a strategy that we can be confident in that's going to allow our vehicles to be safe, to have the kind of reliability and the kind of capability that will allow us to take the driver fully out of the loop at level four. And having a vehicle that is fully autonomous at level four is really an important distinction here because it means that 
it's got the capabilities so that you don't have to have a driver re-engage, which we think is really hard to do. So, so the capability to do this, uh, we're positioned to do it because we've yeah. been doing safe transportation for over 100 years. It's often overlooked that an autonomous <laughs> vehicle is a vehicle, right? <laughs> so there's sophisticated software to do that yeah. path planning, the sensing, but it also has to bring some pretty sophisticated engineering to the vehicle to allow the software yeah. to interface with the vehicle. We've been doing, that's table stakes for us. We've yeah. been doing that for over a hundred years. We know how to build a vehicle that has, has redundant actuation, that has the right feel, that has the right safety, that has the right reliability, and then to integrate in with the software to make the whole yeah. system reliable and safe because trust is huge, and yeah. we have the trust of the American and the global public, and we, yeah. we plan to, to retain that trust. And the key is not to do it first for the sake of doing something from an announcement standpoint. Doing it right is exactly. key, it's really respectful. Exactly. I got to ask you about the digital transformation. It's a buzzword, certainly. We hear all the time, most enterprise companies talk, oh, digital transformation, but really look at what the iPhone did almost 10 years ago. And you've seen the evolution with map technology. This is what consumers are living right now. Snapchat, all the social networks, a new fabric, a digital transformation but in a way the car is in an analog world so talk about some of the technologies that you guys are doing because maps and what they see in the real world is not digital you guys have to convert that to digital this is an exciting area can you just tease us a little bit about how that technology works because that's a new field of science that is really being explored can you share your sure. thoughts there sure so our current vehicles you can buy today have a lot of digital technology in them. There are thousands, tens of thousands of lines of software that are on our vehicles today. And so the vehicle, the automotive, the automobile is going through that same digital transformation that our consumer products have, that are so visible in our lives are going through at the same time. And it's accelerating. And so that acceleration has brought lower cost, more capable sensors into vehicles. It's brought more sophisticated software that can be embedded into the vehicle so that you can do some amazing things like have the vehicle drive itself with the kind of reliability and the kind of safety that, that, that allows you to remove the steering wheel, take the pedals out of the vehicle and make it a fully autonomous vehicle. That acceleration is happening and it's only getting faster. So yeah. our partnership, for example, that we announced today with Velodyne it's all about accelerating the advancement of that digital hybrid uh, device that does some amazing sensing using uh, light to determine what objects are within <laughs> a few hundred meters of the vehicle and how fast yeah, they're moving. Yeah. If you can do that, then you can plan the vehicle and not hit it. You know, I asked you this so, question before, I'm going right. to ask it again, because it's always a trick question. Is the car a peripheral or a computer? And you said last time a little bit of both, but you know, I looked in the trunk and, and taking the analog world and converting it into digital, which you guys have in software, is not easy. Mapping technology, understanding moving objects, having the sensors, you need the compute. I mean, this is a data center on wheels. There is nothing about developing an autonomous vehicle that's easy. <laughs> so we have a very capable team of more than 100 people, more than 20 roboticists, lots of people doing data and analytics, a IT team that's building big data centers to help us process information as we do our testing. We've got engineers yeah. that are helping us integrate these tech software into our vehicle hardware. We've got people evaluating different compute platforms that can be shrunk and put into the trunk. Yeah. We're looking at different design architectures for where to put the LiDAR sensors, how yeah. to design the interior so that it's got the right safety and look and feel and so people want to ride in the interior. All of this is very, very complex, but that's what we do at Ford. We take on hard problems and we make it look easy so that we can provide the kind of service to our customers. Final question for you. As you recruit talent to come in and solve yeah. these problems, obviously my son who's in college asked me the question, he's in, in kind of intrigued by this, a new kind of computer engineer, new data engineers are out there, but yet you have the old school physics and the blocking and tackling engineers. How do those two worlds come together and what kind of people are you guys hiring here in Silicon Valley? What are some of the profiles? Are there new job titles that are popping out of this? Are there new ways, new job opportunities? Just share with the folks kind of the skills you're looking for for this next generation innovation cycle. Sure, those two two worlds are colliding together in pretty 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 creative ways, and so we're we're continuing to look for really great engineers of all types, electronic engineers, uh, people that understand physics, so they can help us with our lidar development and placement. People that understand electrical engineer, we're looking for software engineers. I used the term roboticist earlier, 
earlier. And uh, that's kind of new for us. And uh, those roboticists are helping us understand how do you automate some of the complex tasks that you need to do in an autonomous vehicle. And we're also looking for people that know how to do complex data manipulation, data analytics yeah. people, and machine learning experts. So it's a pretty wide field of expertise that we're looking for. We're hiring and we're growing and we're having some great success because in our experience, the, the uh, young professionals that are coming out of our universities today, they want to work on things that matter. They want to yeah. change the world. And we're going to change the world with this autonomous vehicle that we announced today. They also want to work on hard things. They want to be challenged. And the autonomous vehicle is a challenge. And uh, so the combination of being challenged and working on something that matters and working with other people that are fun to be around that have what we call one four behaviors makes for a really great combination, which is why we're expanding here in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Congratulations, Ken Washington here. We are, this is exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE theCUBE on the ground here in Palo Alto for the big announcement here, the three big announcements. Car shipping in mass production by 2021 20, uh, in five years, bold move. Congratulations. More coverage after this break. Thank you for, thank you for watching.